Hello, welcome to the weather update. It is July 11th, and definitely uh, a, kind of a hot day today. A little less humidity, but guess what was back in the sky? Yeah, you can see here on the satellite, wildfire smoke, and it was kind of hazy, uh, and the sky was not very nice to look at uh, with all the haze around. Uh, certainly, I know we got a little bit of a tease yesterday, and we had that blue sky that we had uh, in the afternoon. You thought, oh, well, today we have a nice blue sky, but unfortunately, nope. Well, the sky was more like... This today, uh, you can see the haze in the air. It wasn't thick, thick, but you notice, and it was almost a slight smell of, of smoke, too, in the air. The air quality was just not very good at all. Uh, and you could see, again, all that haze in the air as the sun was setting. Um, it's not, not good air quality at all. And we do have an air quality alert in effect as well because of it, and ozone as well. Uh, looking at our high-resolution satellite, which we'll look at, you can, you can see the smoke over here. It wasn't that thick, but it was enough to make the skies hazy. Uh, and so all the smoke is coming all the way from Western Canada. You can see lots of wildfire, wildfires going there, and all the smoke is, is kind of spilling down a little bit across the Great Lakes and into the northeast a little bit. So, uh, And you can see here there's a big storm in Hudson Bay there, and that's actually bringing a big ridge. And there's actually smoke in Greenland, too, by the way. So look at that. It's got wildfire smoke again in, uh, in Greenland, believe it or not. No, that's not Greenland, but it could be approaching. This is northern Canada. This is Greenland over here. Um, but uh, it's way, way up there uh, for sure. And you can see there's more smoke here. It's just so much smoke all around the place. Um, so, yeah, bad air quality today. Uh, before we get to anything, uh, get to our local conditions, uh, let's talk about what's going on in Vermont because uh, this disaster has uh, now affected Vermont. Uh, uh, look at this truck flooding. I mean, they've had terrible flooding there. I don't know how that truck wound up in the river, or is that a, that's a road. That's a road that has become a river. My gosh, look at this. So, a disaster there, and uh, just a real disaster going on here. There's lots and lots of damage. Uh, just look at these floodwaters. I mean, it's incredible to see uh, this. It really is. So, state of emergency in Vermont right now due to this climate crisis. Uh, and, uh, it just, just crazy. So, uh, landslides, all this stuff. Look at this. Uh, so a state of emergency in Vermont, uh, going on. And, uh, we're going to go look right now and see what the latest at the weather services, because we still have, um, we still have, uh, f flood warnings in effect for some of the river areas, uh, along there. And you can see the flood waters already um so see again the flooding up there and again if we go to the rainfall reports i don't know which one is the vermont weather weather service we'll figure that out in a moment here i don't know if it's gray may or maine or albany um but uh we'll, we'll actually pull this up on the uh on the uh map as far as the rainfall totals go uh, because it rained more there yesterday uh, so let's go to the map right now, and you see across the country we have uh, ex excessive heat watches for California, excessive heat warnings for most of Arizona, including Flagstaff. Uh, maybe those little islands there would be heat advisories for Flagstaff, uh, but it's been in the 90s there as well. So heat advisory uh, for uh, the south. We have a uh, severe thunderstorm watch in effect for Montana, parts of Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. And uh, also Florida, too, also has a heat advisory, South Florida. And we have air quality alerts again due to ozone and wildfire smoke, uh, mostly due to ozone, though. So let's go look at our uh, current conditions outside. And uh, you'll see here that uh, the temperature is still very warm tonight. Not much of a sea breeze today, 79. Yeah, almost a west-southwesterly flow today, uh, 2.66 uh and 75 if you go a little further out east you have to go all the way to west hampton to get mid 70s but everybody else pretty much in the upper 70s due to that lack of a sea breeze uh and it's still around 80 in jersey but you can see that the dew points well look at the dew point in jersey 73 so not much relief from the dew points for them at least we've had some there's 66 at lakehurst but not much relief from the dew points um and uh we'll pull this in a little more so you can see again the south shore is in the upper 70s, 77, even on the south shore. Uh, the sea breeze is just very weak. And, of course, in the alley, 
yeah, it's still 84 degrees in the alley. Yep. So, um, let's go take a look at what the day was like at Islip. We'll take a look at that first. 77 degrees. And you'll see here 77. And we got well into the 80s today. Maybe touching off to see if we actually managed to hit 90, but it looks like 88 for a good part of the afternoon. Pretty hot. Humidity was lower, uh, but uh, that, that southwest wind uh, really just kept kind of... It was just barely a sea breeze today. Just really barely a sea breeze. Um, that westerly flow. Even, you know, which problem is when you have a westerly flow, you know, it's coming off Jersey. And um, we draw this out here. Um, you know, the air is coming like this. It's coming off Jersey, so it's not really spending a long time over the ocean to cool off by the time it gets here. So uh, that's why you only get some relief versus a straight southerly wind. Well, that's why the humidity is a little lower. So let's go look at our highs for the day. And uh, you can see the highs. 88 at Islip, 90 at Brookhaven, 86 at West Hampton, 90 at Farmingdale. So upper 80s to around 90. Uh, pretty much uh, similar temperatures everywhere because of the lack of sea breeze. So you have that upper 80s to around 90 with somewhat less humidity. Uh, dew points generally low to mid 60s. It's not exactly low, but you know it's better than it could be, uh, I guess. Uh, tomorrow at uh, the lows. Let's go to the lows here. And you can see it did cool off last night though. 54 at West Hampton, 63 at Islip. Never got that cool here, though, of course. Uh, we were probably more like low 70s here in the alley. Uh, and then mid-60s uh, in Jersey for lows. So we did get cooled off because we did have that drier air come in. So now we're going to go to the precipitation, and I'm going to put this to the... I'm going to put this to the max, the 72-hour precipitation total, so we can take a look and show you uh, what's happened in Vermont uh, because Vermont has experienced some catastrophic flooding and uh, you can see a very, very high rainfall amounts here in these areas in Vermont, 6.52, 5.82, uh, just extremely, some of the worst flooding they've ever, ever seen. Uh, five to six inches of rain, uh, really, uh, and, and it actually extends into Canada a little bit too. If we go into extreme southeastern Canada, you'll see some high rainfall amounts there too as well. But, um, and you can see, yeah, look at this. This extends also into Quebec City, where they might have seen some flooding too. I haven't, I haven't looked that up yet, but it wouldn't surprise me. And some of these areas in far eastern Quebec also got, it looks like, a lot of rain uh, from this. So I'd like to see how, f yeah, and no more. Once you go further north, though, yeah, there's nothing. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, because of that, um, yeah, no, it didn't really fall in the areas where the wildfires are, unfortunately. So that's, that's the problem. Uh, looking, uh, going back to our station plot here, um, let's go and show you what we have in the, in the southwest. Because it's pretty warm over there. And if we can find Flagstaff, which I'll try to do here. There's Flagstaff. Right? It's 81. That's not too bad. Dew point 52. That's not that low of a dew point for Flagstaff. I want to see how hot it got there. Because it's, uh, let's see, it got oh, only low 80s. That's not so bad. That's not so bad. So they've avoided it. They, they've avoided it for now, but I think things are going to heat up a little more uh, in the future because that heat will eventually work. They're up at altitude, so that helps them a lot. But you can see there's been a lot of heat in the southwest, 110, uh, just really places like Phoenix, Las Vegas. Uh, the inland areas are really just bacon. And the same thing for the inland areas in California as well, uh, dealing with these very high temperatures, 99 in Fresno, for instance, all right? I'm pretty sure it hit 100 there today, if I'm not mistaken. So let's show you what we got there. Uh, close to it. Close to it. So, uh, yeah, very hot. You have to be right along the coast to any kind of relief. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be dying pretty much over there. I could put the highs up here so you can see how hot it's been. You can see near 100 degrees and then well past 100 into the 110s in some of the areas in Arizona. Uh, just brutal. I don't want to think about that. It's a dry heat. And then you got a lot of heat in Texas, too, 100 as well. So this heat extends all throughout the south, um, even in Florida. Uh, I mean, there's no real relief from it anywhere. In the, I mean, you have to go all the way up into the uh, Minnesota and North Dakota to get some kind of relief from this heat. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with it. And uh, we'll show you the, the high temperatures 
as well. Look at how how warm it got this far. 86 that far north in Canada. That is crazy. That is crazy warmth. Look at the 72 in Greenland. That is crazy. How could it hit 72 in Greenland? That's very disturbing. That's very, very disturbing. So there's this huge ridge in Greenland. That is, uh, that I've never, I, I can't believe it got that warm there. That's very disturbing. So we, we were talking about this huge ridge in Greenland a couple of days ago, and uh, it's going to bring some heat uh, for uh, Greenland. Yeah, I can't believe I'm saying it, but yep. Yep, this is the new normal. It's scary, isn't it? Um, so, as we pass that, let's go to the um, Storm Prediction Center here. Uh, looking at our storm chance, and you can see they've got that enhanced risk. Whoops. Let's go back to this. Can we? Um, yeah, so we got that enhanced risk uh, in that. And it looks like South Dakota. It's a... Yeah, it looks like South Dakota into Nebraska a little bit. So that's something you'll have to watch for. And then here's the day two outlook. It shifts further east. So it does shift into Illinois uh, and Missouri tomorrow. Uh, so let's go to the models here, and uh, we will go ahead and take a look and see what we have to come. So unfortunately, more heat. Um, you can see here uh, there will be more heat. You can see we've got this ridge, kind of ridge over us. But you can see the isobars giving us a southwest wind, and then we have more Rain chances as we get toward Friday. Here we go again. Rain chances Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday perhaps, lingering in the Monday. Uh, and we could see, yeah, more rain, which is the last thing a lot of places need right now. If we look at the total accumulated pre precip forecast, you can see we could see another as much as two plus inches of rain. Long Island, yeah, hasn't rained that much here, but in those areas up, up in the Hudson Valley where it's flooded, that's not going to be good at all. So let's go to the HRRR model here. Let me just take this off this. Put this on dew point. We'll go to the HRRR. Go to the zero Z run. So you can see that westerly flow there. Uh, and you can see that westerly flow kind of continues tomorrow. Uh, and then we get more of a, maybe a little more of a sea breeze in the afternoon showing more of a southerly flow. Dew point's still not excessively high. Uh, you know, inland you might see dew points as low as the upper 50s. Uh, and then, but generally speaking, dew points in the low to mid 60s. Uh, and then it's Thursday that we start dealing with dew points that rise closer to 70 uh, as we get that southerly flow there. And that's going to bring in the moisture for more rain chances. Uh, looking at our air temperatures uh, tonight, probably not dropping as much as it did all th this morning. Probably lows, probably only a low to, low to mid 70s. And the Mar, another hot one. Uh, it's going to be hotter actually. Uh, with more heat, and I uh, definitely think Nassau County, uh, northern, northwest Suffolk, you're probably going to break 90, no problem, low 90s, maybe even mid 90s, be pretty hot tomorrow, it's going to be worse than today. Uh, on the south shore, there will be a sea breeze, Suffolk County, 80s, um, there will be a sea breeze, but it will be weak, I mean, it will do something though, uh, and then it drops to around 70 tomorrow night, and then Thursday, we do it again, uh, this time it's going to be, the heat's going to be more in New Jersey and New York City, uh, with that southerly flow, it should help, at least help us out on Long Island and hopefully keep us from hitting 90. But in Jersey, you're going to have no problem getting up to 90, no problem at all whatsoever. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a cool area here. That That's because there's a, probably an area of thunderstorms over there. So let's go to the radar here. And as far as precipitation tomorrow, it should be dry, showing a few scattered storms way upstate. Uh, nothing for us. Uh, it's Thursday. It looks like it's trying to develop. Yep, there's a line that we're going to have to watch for Thursday night. You can see uh, that we may have to watch for uh, with this uh, little trough here that's going to try to come through. So I'll have to wait. It's as far as we got on this model, all right? Uh, but that would be our next chance of rain, perhaps, with some thunderstorms Thursday night. As we start getting to the humidity, that's going to bring the rain chances back. Um, so speaking of that, let's go back to the GFS and take this a little further here. And you can see that suddenly flow continues uh, into Friday. It's very high dew points there. Um, and those high dew points stick around the next weekend. Look at that. Um, and that's that's going to keep those rain chances around. Um, and then you can see the drier air trying to get in, and maybe it'll get in by sometime next week. Um, temperatures. Obviously, we're going to deal with the heat on Wednesday. Thursday, I think it's confined more to Jersey. And then with the deep southerly flow on Friday and more clouds, probably just 
mid 80s except closer to 90 in jersey and mid 80s on saturday then sunday tends to be a little cooler probably and then here we go again monday dealing with temperatures near 90 again next week i mean i don't want to go too much in the long range but you see generally speaking no real big cool downs and it could actually get even you know we'll have to you know it's just this month is going to be above normal you can see that already with the temperatures um so and then we have the rain chances obviously so if we now this is the gfs so you really can't go i can look at a few more models the nam 12 might take us out to thursday night i don't know if it's gonna let's see if it does because again that's our next chance for rain and it really isn't showing much of anything so but you see the nature of the rain on friday it's again scattered showers and thunderstorms uh it's really hard to say from this this is a lower resolution model from this point on but another model we could use is the european model and you can see the european again friday look at these rain chances saturday uh it's now the european gives a lot of rain so it could be another heavy rain event uh for friday night into saturday just in time for the weekend, more rain again. So it just, well, we'll know more about it as we get towards, uh, I think, uh, Thursday. Um, but we have another dry day tomorrow. Although it, will be, it will be hot, at least if you want to go to the beach, you can do that. It's a good beach day. Uh, let's go look at the skies, and obviously we'll just be looking at clouds now, right? Obviously today we didn't really have that many clouds, just that haze. Tomorrow, probably going to be the similar way. Uh, and then we'll have more high clouds in the afternoon. And then Thursday, we'll probably have more, more high clouds. And then Friday and Saturday, we're going to be dealing with plenty of clouds. Sunday, Monday, maybe we finally get rid of it. Um, that's the low-resolution GFS. Let's go to the RGM next. And you can see tomorrow, we start off with the sun. And then maybe maybe late in the afternoon, uh, maybe some increasing high clouds. Uh, and then more clouds for Thursday. Definitely more, way, way more in the way of clouds for Thursday and then by the time you get to Friday we're going to be dealing with a lot of clouds and we can also look at the RGM as well and it'll show all the rain activity it could uh let's move this over to Friday so you can see more rain activity for Friday Friday might wind up being a wet miserable day so we'll have to see what happens and see how uh if this is scattered or or it's if it's if it's a it's basically a front that's going to just stall over us because hey, we don't really have a jet stream uh, I'll point that out to you again. We'll go back to the... Well, i got to go to the GFS to show that, but we can go to the North American view here, and I'll show you the wind. And you can see there really just isn't much of a jet stream here um, to work with, so it's just really almost non-existent. You see a little bit of one there, uh, but there really isn't. It starts getting a little bit better by next week, the following week, and that's when we can maybe get get a change uh, going and maybe get some dry air in. But other than that, it's just going to be more of the same crap uh, that we've been dealing with. Let's go now look at the smoke model, uh, 21Z. And uh, here we go, vertically integrated smoke. So uh, this is showing again that you'll still sap some of that smoke around. Maybe it gets a little, maybe, maybe slightly better tomorrow. I, I doubt it, though. Again, we have that air quality advisory in effect, too. You can see, look at all the smoke in Western Canada, too, as well. Uh, but because the airflow is really not coming down from Western Canada too much, um, coming down a little bit, so you're getting a glancing blow. But other than that, um, you can see down to the Great Lakes area where they are getting cooler weather, they're also getting more smoke as well so that's the downside of that if you went over there uh we go to the near surface smoke model and it's showing just a little bit of near surface smoke it's mostly because that that's mostly confined to canada but a little bit's going to spill over i think into minnesota and north dakota perhaps um, but for us i don't think we'll be dealing with any of that um i can also look at the h triple r smoke model already and uh, we don't really have the full zero z of that in I'd have to go back, and we don't have the 18Z either. So, I, lastly, let's look at the air quality. Uh, and we all know, the, as far as gases go, this doesn't show ozone, but it does show uh, it does show uh, the gases. And again, carbon monoxide, again elevated in our area. Uh, and you can see, look at all the carbon monoxide still from these fires that is being produced up in Canada. That's a lot of that stuff. That's very poisonous gas. So it's just another reason this doesn't show ozone though. Um, 
But again, let's just lastly go over that air quality alert and our statistics for today. Uh, we have the air quality alert in effect uh, for... Yeah, it's just a lot of guys shrink down. All right, uh, air quality alert in effect uh, from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Wednesday. And it's saying mostly uh, because of ground level ozone right here. All right, so uh, because of the heat uh, and the vehicle exhaust. So that will mix with a little bit of the smoke just to add to the misery. Um, check out that sunset. Yeah, that's because of the smoke. Uh Let's lastly look at our statistics for today, which I'm sure we were above normal, but let's go ahead and look and see. So 88 degrees at Islip, normal high 83. That's 5 degrees above normal uh, for the high, uh, but the low is 63. That's 4 degrees below normal, so that puts us just 1 degree above normal at Islip. Central Park, 1 degree above normal with a high of 89. Um, the Guadia, probably getting to 90. Yep, they got to 90. Uh, and Newark... 92, of course, Jersey being the hottest, as it always is. So I think that's going to wrap up this weather update. Have a good night, and stay cool.